Hey guys, HDV here and welcome to a brand new video. Today we've got a ton of Pokemon information to go over. DLC hints for Pokemon Legends Arceus, new interviews talking about Detective Pikachu 2. There's so much to cover and break down today so we're going to be doing it all. If you are excited for the video though, as always, make sure to drop a like down below. Let's try and hit 500 likes, it really helps out. Leave a comment with your thoughts on anything we cover in today's video. Subscribe if you're brand new for daily Pokemon content. Ring the notification bell. With all of that out of the way though, let's get into the video and I really hope that you enjoy. So, starting things off, let's take a look at a new DLC hint for Pokemon Legends Arceus. Now, of course, we don't have any indication that we're going to be getting DLC. It's just the person that leaked everything about Legends Arceus said it's coming. So we're kind of, I guess, more inclined to believe it. But again, we're not promised anything. This was posted on the r slash PokeLeaks Reddit by Ragarino, Ragarino, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, uh, saying static clouds off the eastern shore of Cobalt Coastlands pointing towards a DLC question mark. It got 751 upvotes, so a lot of people are kind of agreeing uh, with this statement. And as you can see by the picture, uh, it's true. There is a bit of cloud that's just kind of covering something, uh, blocking something. I feel like I'd be less inclined to believe this if the clouds like went all across. But it's just random that these clouds are just blocking off something uh, that might be behind it. So, you know, if we do get DLC, there's talk about distortion worlds, there's talk about new areas opening up. Obviously, we'll get new Pokemon and stuff. Um, but yeah, DLC behind that clouds could be something to look forward to. Uh, there's more people kind of replying saying it's the rumbling, but where uh, is there? Is this where the Elite Four or the Fight Survival Resort areas are in modern Sinnoh? Always thought the Fire Spit Island was Stark Mountain, but it's too low, so there may just be multiple volcanoes in Sinnoh. Could be the orientation is southeast of Fire Spit Island, where this shot was taken. It could mean something, or it could just not. Uh, the perceived map orientations in Pokemon Legends Arceus versus Diamond Pearl Platinum are all kinds of funky so who knows could also be an underwater volcano giving rise to the island you described uh, pretty strange they programmed this intentionally i guess they could have been breaking up an ugly um, horizon line or horizon line at least i'm not the only one who thought this was strange on a french website i posted the same interrogation about the cloud on the map and that strange cloud in the water that clearly seems to point uh well hint on planned dlc content purposely removed from the game the most interesting part is that this cloud on water seems to be in the direction of the bottom right cloud on the world map so yeah again just could be another dlc hint for pokemon legends arcus we don't know there are quite a few hints kind of scattered around like there was stuff about palkia and dialga that i covered in a previous video uh talking about the world where they originated from which could be the distortion world so yeah loads of different hints to go over and again this is just another one um the next thing that we're going to be talking about is pokemon Pokemon mass outbreaks in Pokemon Legends Arceus. Uh, Kurt, who is a very well-known data miner in the community, has found out some more information on outbreaks, well, mass outbreaks, should I say, in Pokemon Legends Arceus. So, with mass outbreaks, leaving Jubilife has a 20% chance to despawn an area that you are not traveling to. Returning to Jubilife from any area, not Ancient Retreat, has a 20% chance for each area to generate, replace, an outbreak. Outbreak seeds are crypto uh, secure, so no influence them, influencing them. So basically, uh, what is the situation here? So every time you leave to a new area, every other area has a 20% chance to reset all the spawns, which of course will then reset a new outbreak. So let's say you have all of the areas uncovered and you just go to Insidium Field Lens and then go back to the village. You know, that'll have a 20% chance for all of these other locations on the map to have a uh, 20% chance to spawn new outbreaks and stuff. So you have a 1 in 5 chance of that area having an outbreak. But then, of course, all of the areas have that chance. So a lot of people are saying, like, I'm not getting mass outbreak spawning and stuff like that. Yada, yada, yada. Um, apparently, this is the actual maths for it. You know, you have a 20% chance every time you go back and forth from the village. So, yeah, all you actually have to do is just constantly go back and forth if you're not getting outbreaks. So you're trying to get a specific outbreak. Keep going back and forth. You have a 20% chance of a new outbreak spawning in that location um, that you're not traveling to uh, every single time. So that's all there is to it. There's nothing behind the lines or anything like that. Just like uh, with having to wait for the distortion things to pop up. Uh, this is just very simple as well. You just have to keep going back and forth and you have a 20% chance to despawn that area. He then goes on to say the outbreak initial seeding is what I'm referring to with the CS. PRNG seeding. Uh, the already documented manipulation methods after an outbreak is generated is separate from this. Uh, there's specific outbreaks that are locked behind completing parts of the story or are all mons outbreakable when you unlock the area. All outbreaks for an, for an area are gated behind the same story progress value. It's all available or none. Um, so yeah, I thought the mass outbreaks were kind of 
I don't know, locked behind Pokedex entries because I only ever seem to find an outbreak once I've got that Pokemon in the Pokedex. Like, I don't have Togepi in my Pokedex and I'm not seeing any Togepi outbreaks. However, I just completed the page for Hisui and Zoroark and now I'm finding Hisui and Zoroark outbreaks. So I don't know if that's anything to do with it or it's just random coincidence. But yeah, apparently uh, that is all the information for the outbreaks that you kind of need to know to get them to, um, to respawn and stuff. The next thing we we're going to go over is something very, very interesting. It was recently posted by Lutu um, saying a few minutes ago, uh, not from when I'm recording this video, I'm recording this on Thursday, I don't know when this day's, the, the video is going out. But anyway, a few minutes ago, the Creatures Inc. site posted a ton of interviews with their staff about working on Pokemon. There's a lot here and will take a long time to translate properly. Like we're talking name drops of Detective Pikachu 2, former spin-offs and working with Iwata. So kind of exciting stuff that you know all these interviews they're talking about um these different things you know detective pikachu 2 is something that got buried a long time ago it was announced in may of 2019 along with pokemon sleep so does that mean that they are still kind of working on it it's still in development they're just keeping really quiet about it former spin-offs as well that's going to be really really interesting to hear about whether they bring those back and stuff uh, and working with the water so these in interviews are obviously going to be really really useful once they are all translated now we don't know how long it's going to be translate until it's going to be translated we do have pokey starmy who is a very well-known translator in the community um i would definitely go give her a follow because she's going to be translating this stuff um which again will be really really useful i will cover it all once it's been like translated and stuff um but of course this is being recorded on Thursday and it's going up at any other time, so I don't know. Uh, but either way, these interviews will hopefully slowly be translated by Pokestar. She says, interviews, everybody vote for which one you want to see translated the most. I'm busy with work this next week, but I'll translate the one that gets the most votes. If they are interesting, once I get to take a proper look at them, I probably will translate all of them when time allows. Then we have Luta replying saying, honestly, they're all really insightful. Both middle interviews and bottom right are really, really good. Um, so yeah, that's just some more information about potential Pokemon stuff that we might hear about in the future. Um, and so hopefully uh, we do get some, um, some yeah, a little bit more news on, on that. And, and again, just some news on Detective Pikachu too. Like, where is it? I have no idea. Uh, the next thing that we're going to go over is this. Uh, nothing too crazy. Uh, it's just Sarah B tweeting out saying, the next Pokemon variety show has been announced. Uh, Poke Doko features uh, Ryogu uh, Matsumaru. I'm not sure how to pronounce these names. I really do apologize. And begins on April the 3rd, 2022 on TV Tokyo. Now, I wanted to include this in today's video because I don't think that this is the April thing that Riddler Koo was referencing. He did say we are going to get something big in April. I don't think this is that. I'm pretty sure it's going to be something to do with the games or something. So yeah, just wanted to kind of make a point of that and include that in today's video. Uh, the final thing that we're going to be talking about today is the new Pokemon trading card game uh, beta. So yeah, they're bringing out a new trading card game beta uh, online kind of game thingy. And it's going to be available for Canada soon with the testing period being on February the 22nd, 2022. Now, in regards to when this video goes up, it could be very uh, like it could be today, it could be tomorrow. I don't know uh, when the 22nd, uh, if this video is going up on the 22nd or not. But yeah, if you are in Canada, you will be able to download the beta for the new TCG live game. Um, so yeah, lucky you. Uh, but that's basically everything that I wanted to go over for today's video. Uh, again, do you think this is potentially DLC stuff? Um, I I don't know. I, I'm kind of just grasping at straws right now. I just really want to hear something about the DLC. And of course, Pokemon Day is very much arriving soon it is next sunday on the 27th but they won't be dropping a pokemon presents on the 27th if they are going to drop one it will be on the friday um the date like a couple days before pokemon day because they never drop stuff on the weekend um so yeah next week well i don't i don't know when this is going up but basically um the friday before pokemon day the 25th is i could see when we are most likely to get something but if we are going to get anything it will be announced this week and, and hopefully we do get some information on dlc or gen 9 or just something at least to look forward to um even though not like not like, like legends arcus is kind of going down or anything a lot of people are still really enjoying it and still playing it uh it's just going to be interesting to see if we do get dlc for it uh and of course all the outbreak stuff's there for you all that stuff and again what do you think about this uh detective pichu 2 all this stuff i'm very excited to hear these interviews but anyway that is going to be everything for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did make sure to drop a like down below let's try and hit 500 likes leave a comment with your thoughts again on anything we covered in today's video subscribe if you're brand new for daily pokemon content make sure to ring the notification bell so you don't miss anything so, uh, and all that everything from me have a fantastic rest of your day and until next time peace